Okay, another Mrs. H psychology revision video. Again, this is for paper three of AQA psychology, paper three, addiction topic. And we're now looking at risk number four, which is family influence. So we've already done um, a little video on genetic vulnerability, another one on stress, third one on personality. We're now on family influence. And the final one for this little bit will be on peers. Okay, so I'm going to talk you through different ways that families can influence addictive behavior. First one, probably the most obvious one, is social learning theory, SLT, social learning theory. And a quick recap of some of the key terms you'd, you should be using with any explanation here. First of all, we observe role models and we imitate some of their behaviors. We learn vicariously or vicariously, in other words, from seeing others rewarded or punished for their behavior. Um, so we don't have to learn directly as the behaviorist explained, right? SLT is different. And there are mediating factors that come between the model's behavior and whether we copy it. So the stimulus in this case is the model's behavior and the response is whether we go on and copy it, whether the person observing goes on to copy it. One very important mediating factor is the motivation to copy. So um, if we, for example, see a model rewarded for their behavior, then we are more likely to copy. Um, but if we see something negative consequence as a result of their behavior, we're less likely to copy. Okay, so the important thing to understand here is this is only explaining the initiation. Um, it's not the addiction, but it's the initiation into trying out the potentially addictive behavior. So let's have a look at some of the research to support the idea of SLT in addictive behavior. So Akers and Lee supporting evidence, they investigated over five years the smoking levels of 454 young adults aged between 12 and 17. Um, they looked at various social influences actually um, to investigate the initiation, continuation and also quitting smoking. Um, and one of those sources was definitely um, one of those social sources was family. So that was supporting the idea of SLT. We've also got the white study from different uh, reference um, as, as shown here. And that was a longitudinal research on smoking and drinking behavior. They collected data four different times from children aged between 15 and 28, as well as their parents. And what they showed, what they found rather was that uh, parental modeling, particularly by the mother, affected the offspring's drinking, but it wasn't so influential on their smoking behavior. So an important one. So we've got evidence then to support the idea of SLT and, and family influence um, in terms of social learning theory. Let's have a look at a couple of other ways that we can explain the family influence. So another family influence is really our expectancies. So these are our um, observations and our experiences that have set up expectancies or um, associations and also schemas made from what we've witnessed as we've been growing up from our experiences. So for example, let's say that you have observed um, in the family that uh, somebody else in the family who's drunk, who gets regularly drunk, um, is going to feel very ill the next day, in other words, hung over, witness that. So um, you may be influenced by that. You might decide that that's not going to be right for you, that you don't want to feel like that. Or on the other hand, it could be that you see parents smoking and or drinking um, socializing and you think it looks quite cool so that could on the other hand encourage those behaviors so we can see that these expectancies of, of our behavior um, can arise from our fam from what we've witnessed with, with families so family can increase or decrease our chances of trying out substance or an addictive behavior and therefore becoming going on to use that substance or that behavior and eventually becoming addicted so we could apply this also um, in terms of gambling behavior. So the expectancy that you will win, the expectancy that you won't win is obviously going to be influential. That's the second one. Let's have a look at the third one. So we could bring in number three, perceived parental approval. So this is the extent to which 
and let's say an adolescent behavior or an adolescent believes that their parents have positive attitudes towards the substance or the addictive behavior like gambling. So Livingstone, for example, found in final year high school students that were allowed to drink at home by their parents, they were significantly more likely to drink excessively the following year at college. So it seems that the perception of approval from your parents is important. If we believe our adults, you know, our family, um, our family adults will won't monitor our behaviour, won't uh, reprimand our, us for our behaviour, then we are significantly more likely to go on. And Livingston found we're more likely to develop an addiction as well. So this per perceived parental approval is the third one. Very briefly, final one is exposure. So adolescents are more likely to start using alcohol, alcohol, for example, in a family where alcohol is an everyday feature or if there is a history of addiction. But obviously we'll look at, that's not going to be uh, determined. There are so many factors that will influence that. So let's have a look at the evaluation. So really importantly, we need to evaluate this. First of all, individual factors influence how much a family influences addictive behaviours. So for example, the age of the child, how good the relationship is between the, the parents, let's say, and the child. So for example, a younger child may, may be more influenced than an older child. So family influences are not constant throughout life and they won't be the same for every individual in that family. So you may have siblings who react differently. So there are these individual factors, which are really important. Also, don't forget, there are mediating factors coming between observing a behavior and imitating it. Um, so it's not an automatic, just because we witness something, we observe something, we're automatically going to copy it. There are these really important mediating factors, like the motivation to copy. So, for example, if someone witnesses regular drunken behavior in a family, and with, with awful negative consequences as a result of that, that is as likely to prevent that person regularly drinking. So it's it's likely to prevent them initiating drinking behavior and certainly um, not necessarily going on to becoming uh, addicted to that behavior. Also, the relative influence of the family against other factors is important, needs commenting on. So um, we've got other factors we've already commented on, like peers, personality, biological, genetic influences. And so this relative influence of the family is difficult to gauge. Research suggested is important, but it's difficult to say whether it is the more, most important or whether it is more important than peers or personality, etc., etc. It's quite difficult to tease out which one is the most influential. So that's the end of this one, family influences, and we've got one final a little video on this particular area of risk factors, which is peers, which will come next.